chance to begin to walk with, to be with Jesus in his suffering, in his passion, just to be with him. This is the, the third week of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, are that time to just be with him in his suffering, to turn our gaze on him, not so much a time of action, um, but a time more of just being, to be with, to notice that word compassion, to suffer with. And so we, today, as we come to the yoga here, to move, to breathe, to settle the mind, we pray for the grace to be able to enter this week in with a little more presence, a little more awareness, both of the historical Jesus that we remember in our services throughout this week, and also of the living Christ who is suffering in our worlds. The living Christ that's within us. And so we realize that this Paschal mystery, this life, death, and resurrection is playing out in our world, in our own lives, in our communities, in our families. And so yoga is this opportunity where we can be with, we can enter into this compassion, this suffering with, to be with some of the difficulties, some of the darkness, some of the maybe areas within the body, within our emotions, uh, to like lean into that, to be with that, but do so with an awareness of the resurrection, of the light, of new life that's to come. And so it seems like some people have settled in here already. So let's go ahead and um, come down to your back, like beginning yoga at the end of the day or in the evening on the back. It's beginning to settle. And notice, notice the feelings, the sensations in the body. This Monday of Holy Week. This third week of the spiritual exercises time, a time to be, a time to be with, time to draw close, to stay near, stay awake, and to be aware of the breath. Starting to deepen and slow the breath. Maybe imagining the breath coming in through the bottom of the feet, rising up through the body, through the crown of the head. And then imagining that breath moving down from the head down and out through the feet. And perhaps you would like to set an intention, a grace that you're seeking, maybe a word or a phrase. What is your intention or your desire during this week, this holy week? Perhaps the intention to just to be with, to be with Jesus in his suffering the suffering we will hear and read and pray with in the stories and to be with the suffering of Jesus in our world. We pray that in our own unique ways, whether students or doctors or lawyers or priests or whatever stage or vocation our life might be in right now, we pray for the grace to open our hearts, open our minds to the suffering in our world. And we pray for the grace to be able to enter that, to lean into it, and to help bring about the redemption of the world that is new life.
And so beginning, there might be some yoga mats still over there. If not, you can just use an imaginary yoga mat and let the whole carpet be your mat. So let's begin some gentle movement of the feet and the hands, rolling the wrists and ankles. Reach the arms overhead. Take a nice deep stretch with the right hand. Grab the left wrist and find some length in the side body. Here you go. Can I give you this mat? Thank you so much. Okay. Andres have to do without. <laughs> and walk the hands over to the right side and the feet to the right side as you ground the left hip. Find that half moon shape. Feel that length and extension in the side body. And then come on back to center and switch the grip with the, the opposite way. Whatever you did, switch the grip and lengthen the side body and then walk the feet the other way over to the left side or the other side. Continue to ground both hips and just find that length and extension in the body. Good, and then come on back to center. Let's come into a Supta Baddha Konasana, a reclined bound angle. So bring the feet together, the soles of the feet, let the knees come open. And then take your left hand to the center of the chest and your right hand just above or below the navel. In this reclined position, we recall this, the Last Supper. Yes, reclined a little different than we are right now, but the disciples and Jesus were reclined at table, sharing this meal. You're just imagining yourself sharing this meal, breaking bread, breaking bread, and then sharing wine in this Passover meal. together and give yourself a hug wrap your arms around the knees a little rock side to side a gentle massage of the low back and just lengthen the left leg and squeeze the right knee in reaching and then flex and point the right foot And take it up to the sky, find some length, maybe flex point or circles with the right ankle. And lift the knee, lift the head towards the knee. And then a half happy baby pose, or maybe sometimes called stirrup pose, pull that knee and pull the foot down with the hand as you press the foot up. Find that resistance. And then with the left hand, grab the right foot with the sole, the, wrapping it around the edge of the foot. And then just a couple times, kick that foot out to a diagonal up to the left. Good. And then release the leg back down. And switching, taking the left knee, bringing it, squeezing it around the left rib cage and up towards the left armpit, left shoulder. Yeah, maybe flex point, circle, and then take the leg up to the sky. 
flex point circles. And then a half happy baby pose, stirrup pose. Bend the knee, maybe reaching your knee, your arm inside the left knee if that's available. Either using one hand or both hands. If you can't reach for the foot, just grabbing for the ankle or the shin. Continuing that slow, deep breath. And then reach with the right hand for the outer edge of the left foot and take a couple of those kicks into the hand. Pushing the left foot out to a diagonal, up and over towards the right. Good, and then release the legs back down. And just take a moment here and again, be aware of the body. Imagining after the Passover meal, the Seder meal, where a good amount of wine is consumed, maybe feeling a little tired, maybe recalling a sacred meal or recalling the Eucharist, what it is like to share a meal, be it the Eucharist the, at Mass or a sacred meal where you felt Jesus' presence, sharing bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ. Noticing what does it feel like in the body to feel, to receive, to allow Christ, the good spirit, to enter into the body. Just feeling that energy, that spirit animating the entire body. And then bring the knees into the chest again. And we're going to make our way to hands and knees. So you can either come through fetal position or rock and roll forward and back. Actually, I'm just kidding. We're not going to come to feet. We're not going to come to hands and knees. We're going to come to a seat. Sorry. <laughs> so come on to a seat. And let's come into bound angle pose. We were last in recline, recline bound angle. So maybe butterfly pose. Just reach for the feet. And just feeling the feet, maybe gazing at your feet. And just recalling Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. What would be your reaction to be in Jesus' presence and him wanting to wash your feet? Perhaps saying, oh no, I need... I should wash your feet. Who am I to allow you to wash my feet? Maybe giving your feet a little massage with the thumbs, massaging the sole of the feet. Just give your feet a little bit of love if that's comfortable for you. And then maybe wrapping the hands around the toes and leading with the heart and beginning to fold forward, bringing your heart towards the feet, the head towards the feet. And breathing and maybe just imagining Jesus breathing life into you, Jesus blessing you, washing your feet, sending you to be, go and be of service, go and do likewise. Go and lay down your life for your friends, for my friends. It's humbling ourselves. We pray for that grace, for humility, to be of greater selfless service. Coming back up, and just cross the leg one way. Maybe if you're super flexible, maybe coming into that fire log pose, which I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that in my life, stacking your feet, but your legs. So we're just a cross-legged pose. And we'll do a, a forward fold over the legs here. So find some length in the spine and then begin to walk your hands out in front of you. Keep the seat grounded. And then maybe beginning to fold gently 
over the crossed legs. Feeling into the sensations in the body. With each breath, just softening a bit. Again, this posture of humbling ourselves, of lowering ourselves down. Emptying this week of Holy Week is a process of kenosis, of self emptying. Emptying of the stuff that gets in the way of allowing love, light, new life to enter. Walk the hands over to the right side, reaching it out in a diagonal, stretching, lengthening. Just gently walking the hands back to center and then over to the left side or the other side, reaching out, find length in the rib cage and the arms and the fingers and length in the spine. And come on back to center and cross the legs the other way. And some length in the spine, length in the crown of the head. And then possibly begin to fold forward as much or little as feels right for you. And just to walk those fingers out, maybe tenting the hands. With each exhale, can you soften the inhale, find some length, and exhale, soften. And then walk the hands over to the left side first this time. Find some length in the left. Ground down through both of the hips. And very slowly, gently, just walking the hands over to the right side. And coming back to center. And keeping the legs crossed or crossing either way. We'll take a side bend. So take your left hand. I'm going to start mirroring, doing the opposite here. But we'll do both sides. So either side. And taking the left hand out, reach the right hand up to the sky. And just coming into a side bend. So if you can really ground down through both hips and find that length in the right side body or the, the upper, the top ribs there. Maybe bend the elbow a little bit. You roll the wrist, the fingers, feel that length and extension, breathe into it. Well, yoga is a process of preparation. So this Monday, a great time just to prepare, prepare the body, prepare the mind, prepare the spirit. Come back to center, reach the hands up to the sky and taking a side bend the other way. We've been preparing, preparing throughout Lent, perhaps sticking to the Lenten intentions we set out, or perhaps not. I guess a lot of us not, not exactly with the perfection we strove, we were striving for. Come back to center. But you know, I like yoga, it's yoga practice, not yoga perfect. Let's come back to center. Let's take a little spinal twist here, right? Practice, 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 and all is coming. Could we see our Christian faith and spirituality in the same way? Right? It's not about perfection, but it's about practicing, practicing service. Let's take a twist over to the left side. So take your right hand to the outside of the left hip. Your left hand comes behind you. Find length. So the inhale, lengthen the spine, lengthen the neck and the head. And your exhale, take a twist and gaze over the left shoulder. Two more breaths. Inhale to lengthen and exhale, soften. And with your next exhale, come back to center. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky. 
and exhale, take a twist to the other side. So left hand to the outside of the thigh or the knee. Your right hand behind you can help you find some more lift and length as you twist. A few breaths, each exhale soften into the twist. Just notice the tightness in the body Can you breathe into it? Can you imagine yourself twisting a little deeper, imagining the subtle body twisting a little bit more? And then coming back to center, reach the hands to the sky and lengthen the legs long. Lengthen a little bit more, the legs, the arms reaching up to the sky. And then begin to fold forward, lead with the heart, lengthen, bend those knees a little bit so you can fold forward even a little bit more and then bring the hands to the shins, to the ankles, maybe to the feet, but it's not about grasping as far as we can go or trying to find this perfection now. It's just humbling ourselves down. It's doing our little part here to care for ourselves so we can go and be of greater service. It's connecting with this divine spirit, going down to greater depths of consciousness and so then we can go out into the world and be, be sources, instruments of healing and transformation in our world. Slowly come back up and just take the hands behind you, let the head Drop back, lift the heart. A little reclining here. Maybe just staying here for a few breaths or maybe lifting the hips off the ground, imagining a string pulling you up from the center of the pelvis, lifting through the heart. So that's an option and pointing the toes towards the ground or maybe just staying with this reclined, staying with the seat on the ground. So your choice, take two more breaths wherever you're at. Just really open that chest, let the shoulders fall down, let the head fall back. And coming back up, just shaking the legs out, the feet out a little bit, the arms, the hands. And now let's swing the legs around and come into a tabletop pose. Just settling in with the wrists underneath the shoulders, the knees under the hips. A little bit of movement side to side, maybe little circles. And begin some cat-cow poses. Your inhale to find length, shine the heart forward, lift the tailbone, gaze up between the eyebrows and exhale. Curve the spine, tuck the tailbone, chin towards chest. A couple more times like this, a little bit of movement. Maybe taking, starting to circle the hips around, a little bigger circles towards child's pose. Maybe close the eyes as you just breathe and circle, move side to side, forward and back. Just really feel, feel the sensations, feel these emotions, feel the energy. Imagining ourselves in the garden, in the garden of Gethsemane with Jesus, as he goes off to pray. We say, sit here. He says to the disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. Let's come into child's pose, taking the knees a little wider, the big toes together. He says, stay here and keep watch. 
Imagine yourself in the garden. Maybe staying here in child's pose, just continuing to listen. Or maybe coming to just some gentle movement back to hands and knees and to cat cow. Maybe some more cat cows here. Maybe reaching one arm up to the sky and taking a, threading the needle, taking a twist. So either staying still or bringing some movement. Taking any more movement for the next minute here in hands and knees, child's pose, or just remaining still for the next minute, and then we'll move a little bit more. Staying here for another moment or maybe making your way to a downward dog.
Coming into a downward dog or back to hands and knees. We continue in the movement here, walking, bending one knee, straightening the other. Let's come forward to plank, hands and knees, or hands and feet, plank top of the push up, and then back to downward dog. One more time, inhale, come forward and lower down, knees, chin, and chest, coming down to the belly, coming to forearms into Sphinx pose. Shine the heart forward. And begin to lift the elbows off the ground slightly. Lowering back down. Maybe bringing the hands in a little bit closer underneath the shoulders. Press the elbows in towards the rib cage. Shine the heart forward. Lift the head. Soften the shoulders down the back. And lowering back down. And maybe one more time up through cobra or upward dog or just coming back to hands and knees to downward dog. And then walking your hands between the feet, coming into a forward fold. Bend the knees, let your torso fall heavy, maybe grabbing opposite elbows. Little movement side to side. Good. Bring the hands to the shins, lift up halfway, come to a flat back, lengthen through the spine, the head, and fold forward. Walk the hands over to the right side. Bend the left knee as deeply as you need, and then begin to twist a little bit. Take the right hand to the right hip, maybe up to the sky. And then switching, gently moving to the other side, bending the right knee, straightening the left knee. Take the right hand towards the left foot or shin or ankle, left hand can come to the hip or up to the sky. And lowering back down. Gently coming up one spine, one vertebra at a time, reaching up to the sky. And lowering back down, lowering the hands back down and coming into standing Tadasana pose. Now just imagining yourself with Jesus as he's arrested. Just kind of notice what he, his freedom, his reaction. Let's take the hands behind the back, clasp your hands, wrap the shoulder blades around the back of the heart. Bring the hands down a little bit lowering them down, letting the shoulders come down. So as you drop the hands down the seat a little bit, drop those shoulders, really get a nice stretch to the shoulders and the front of the body. Coming into a little deeper of a back bend. Stretch the throat and then gently come up. Keep those hands clasped as best as you can and then begin to fold forward. Those knees can bend. <clears throat> if you can lift the hands as much as you can up towards the sky. Maybe dropping the right shoulder and bending the right knee and opening the left shoulder, opening the chest towards the left. And switching sides. And releasing, coming back to center, releasing the hands. 
kind of surrendering, letting that grasp go. And from this forward fold, just step the right foot back and lower the right knee. If you have any pain in your knee, you may fold over that mat or another mat or Andres, if you have no mat, <laughs> take care of your knee there. Well, perhaps in these lunges, we'll do some lunges here. <clears throat> perhaps Jesus, I'm imagining Jesus on the road move through uh, the low lunge to a half or quarter splits or maybe full splits. So pull the hips back, pull the left hip back as you start to straighten the left leg and point the left toes back towards you. Bend through the knee again, coming into the lunge, shining the heart forward. A couple times like this, these back toes can either be tucked or untucked. Just find which feels better. And pull the hips back while well, feeling better. I don't know if we're kind of in this, like, not necessarily trying to feel better, but really being with, right? Being with the, some resistance. And can we kind of learn from Jesus's freedom, his the surrender, the not running, not shying away from the truth, his truth, his vocation. Coming back to the low lunge. And then coming to standing on the right knee and bring the hands, clasp the hands. And yes, hopefully our vocation doesn't lead us to in the place that led Jesus. If my mom is watching, I know that it's a fear of yours. You see me run off in the world in different places, but may we surrender in our way to our vocations, right? Letting go, even if it entails some suffering, even if it entails some struggle, take the hands up to the sky. We're going to come into another twist pose, into our prayer twist. So take the hands together to heart center and then the right elbow to the top or outside of the left knee. Lots of twists tonight. So this kind of twisting out. A twisting is also this kind of a turning, a conversion, a turning from the old ways into the new Maybe tucking the toes and lifting the right knee off the ground. And then come back to center. Lower that knee. Lower the hands. And we're going to make our way back to a standing fold. Maybe taking a half splits here or just finding your way back to the forward fold. Let's reach the hands back up to the sky. Letting the hands come down to your side. And just for a moment, considering the crosses that we bear and the people who help us carry our crosses, the people whose crosses we, bear, we help carry. The daily struggle that we may have that of just being living out of truth, living out of our true selves. Reach the hands up to the sky. Coming into that back bend, maybe cap cactus arms this time, goalpost arms, opening the chest. Maybe clasping the hands the other way. Wrapping the shoulder blades around the back of the heart again, taking another back bend. The sense of calling out, calling out to God. You know, imagining Jesus calling out what, like, let this suffering pass, but not my will, but your will. And fold forward. Maybe keeping those hands clasped, lifting the hands up to the sky, maybe taking that a little twist here, dropping one shoulder as you bend that knee and dropping the other shoulder. And then 
releasing that, lowering the hands back down. And then taking the low lunge on the other side. So step the left foot back, lower down to the left knee. And we'll move through the low lunge to half or quarter or full splits. So pull the hips back, peeling the toes off the ground, pointing the toes back towards you. Pull the right hip back, left hip forward. Inhale, shine the hips forward. Shine the heart forward. Gaze upwards. Exhale. Pull the hip back. Straighten the right leg as much as possible. Lengthen the spine. One more time. Inhale to lunge and exhale into that half or quarter or full splits. And coming back. Coming to standing on the left knee. And clasping your hands the other way. Press the right knee forward. Maybe staying right here. Or maybe lifting the hands up to the sky. And then prayer twist. Taking the left elbow on top of or to the outside of the right knee. Turning the center of the chest towards the thumbs. Press the palms together as you point the elbow, maybe tucking those back toes and lifting the left knee off the ground. And back to center. Making right back to that standing forward fold, maybe that standing splits. And back to your forward fold. Let's lengthen those feet a little bit wider, wider than the mat, coming into this wide legged forward fold. If you're taking a little movement side to side, bending one knee, straightening the other, maybe just a little bit like an inch bend or maybe moving through Skandasana. So finding a little movement side to side. Maybe the hands guide you, maybe bringing the hands to heart center. coming down, walking your hands out in front of you and coming down to your knees. And we'll kind of like a child's pose, but uh, much wider frog pose. So with the knees making almost 390 degree angles, take those knees real wide. So the thighs are parallel with the front, with the short end of your mat. And then maybe taking your Forearms and elbows to the ground. So settling in here to this frog pose. And just stay here for another eight to ten breaths. Breathing into Resistance, can you soften in? What comes up when you face some resistance, adversity? Can you find your breath? Can you find your intention, the grace you're seeking?
And a final breath or two. If you're at your forearms or elbows, start to gently rise up back to your hands. Back to hands and knees to tabletop pose. And here we're going to come into standing on the knees, so in a setting up for camel pose. We can think of the camel entering through the eye of the needle. Right, perhaps the challenging path that we're called to walk sometimes. Take the hands to your low back. Toes can be tucked or untucked here. Imagine your hips are pressed up against a wall. So if you were all against a wall like so, your hip points would still be touching it as you start to come back. And so keeping those hips stacked as best as you can over the knees. Coming back up to neutral, maybe taking one hand to the back heel. If you tuck the toes, it takes brings a little bit closer. And maybe reaching the opposite and up to the sky. And then coming back and switching hands. Back hands, maybe back to the hips or lowering down to the thighs or maybe both hands to the heels. Can you keep pressing those hips forward? Imagining that wall right in front of you that your hip points are pressing against. Gently releasing, coming back. Taking a moment with the neutral spine, just letting the spine neutralize for a moment, coming back to the center and balance. And then doing the, taking an opposite stretch, a real deep forward fold, taking the crown of the head to the ground, maybe reaching back with the toes tucked, reaching back for the heels, rabbit pose. So the crown of the head comes towards the ground as best as possible. And you get this deep curve pulling on the heels. And get a nice stretch for the spine. Good. And coming back to hands and knees. Good, and hands and knees, maybe staying in hands, hands and knees or to downward dog. If downward dog is available for you. And walk your hands, walk your feet between the hands again. Halfway lift. Fold forward. And reach the hands up to the sky. And lower the hands back down, coming to mountain pose, Tadasana. You know, in a sense, we can see this kind of like falling down, getting up, this sort of embodying the rhythms of life, this Paschal mystery, the, the small deaths, the sufferings, then the getting back up. Right? And this kind of road, the way of the cross of Jesus' own falling down, people helping him get up, but continuing to move forward with a direction, with this one-pointed focus that is union, union with God. Let's come into a balancing pose here, into tree pose. So with the right foot grounded, take the left foot. The left foot can press against the ankle and maybe like wise Mary using a bench or a wall or a chair if uh, always Great to have a little bit of help if, if needed. 
maybe taking the foot up a little higher just underneath the knee or the foot can come just above the knee pressing just not right against the knee joint hands can come to heart center and find really ground here find your breath and find a still point A sense of practice here of like how did Jesus endure this? How did Jesus so surrender? In a sense here, can we practice kind of this surrender, right? Of finding your breath, finding where is your gaze, really being reminded of a sense of I can endure, I can show up to anything if I'm grounded in the source. Maybe reaching the hands overhead, maybe close the eyes. And then coming out of it, just marching out a little bit, taking it to the other side, grounding one foot as the other foot comes either to the ankle, below the knee or above the knee, hands can come to heart center or overhead. You know, just using this as practice, right? This pose is practice of when things don't go the way we want them to go, when we're confronted with something that is difficult. Can we find the resource of the ground, the breath, and that awareness that we are loved? The hands overhead, maybe closing the eyes. Coming back, letting all that go. Good. Let's take a few um, cycles through, I'm just making circles with reaching up and then folding forward, but taking circles a few times each direction. So this sense of like this kind of free flowing movement to surrender, to let go, to just kind of see if we can be in the hands of our creator, of our source, of God as this kind of surrendering. So inhale, reach the hands up to the sky and over side bend over to the left. Maybe bend those knees as much as you need and then coming into a forward fold at the center. And then over to the right. Reaching up, side bend to the left, coming back to center. Two more times like this. Not worried how it looks or how perfect this circle is, but just kind of dropping into this. This flow, this movement where we're coming into greater and greater union with, with God. Whenever you're ready, maybe switching directions. I'm just noticing the difference of the movement on the other side. time, reaching up, reaching up to the sky. This mix of both, maybe, oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Maybe this sense of just praying, like, come, fill me. And fold forward. And let's come into a yogi squat as best as you're able to, if you're not able to, if the knees or Maybe just a forward fold here, but opening those feet, turning the toes out. And 
and just lower the head down a bit. And from your yogi squat or from your fold, just come back to your seat. Maybe just plop back. And again, coming down to your back. Hug those knees into the chest. Just imagining Jesus here being coming into the fullness of this union uniting the divine with all of creation is bringing together take your left ankle and bring it above the right knee for this figure four recline pigeon and pull that right thigh, right knee towards you. You're threading the left hand between the legs and the right hand to the outside of the thigh and pulling the right thigh towards you. Flex the left foot so the toes point back towards the knee. Maybe using the left elbow to press the left knee away. And release the right foot back to the ground. Keep that left ankle crossed. Scoot the left, the hips over to the left a few inches. And then just let the knees fall over to the right. Let turn your gaze across the left shoulder. Let the left shoulder come down towards the ground. Maybe using the right hand to the top or the outside of the right thigh or knee. A breath or two as you start to find your way gently back to center. Once you're back in center, take the right ankle over the left knee, making that number four, and threading the right hand through if that's possible, or you can just keep your foot on the ground here and press the right knee away or reaching, lifting the left foot off the ground and pulling the left thigh towards you, flex the right foot. Pressing away the right knee a little bit more. And lowering the left foot, if that's up, scoot the hips to the right a few inches and begin to drop the legs over to the left as you turn your gaze across the right shoulder, right arm, maybe using the left hand on the outside of the right thigh or knee. Gently coming back to center. In the next minute or so, any final poses, maybe squeezing your legs in, feeling this embrace of the, this coming together of the Trinity, of the creator, the spirit of creation, how Jesus brought this unity. Maybe a happy baby pose, reaching inside the knees for the outer edge of the feet. Maybe a plow pose or shoulder stand. Any final poses before you find your corpse pose, a resting pose. Be imagining the care that of those who stayed, 
and those who saw something more in Jesus and took his body into the tomb, preparing it with the proper custom with oils. Settling into your final resting pose. Letting the feet fall open, the palms face up towards the sky. in the palms of God's hands, healing this union. that they may all be one. May they be in us just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be one so that the world will believe that you sent me. I in them and you in me. so that they may be completely one in order that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them as you love me. You're welcome to stay here resting on your back or whenever you're ready, you may choose to come to a seat and taking a few more minutes dwelling 
speaking with God. Perhaps just breathing. We have a few more minutes, so choose whichever pose, whether it's staying right here or coming to a seat and taking a few minutes of seated prayer. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. All I have and call my own, you have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Give me only your love and your grace, that is enough for me. If you're laying down, begin some gentle movements of the fingers and the toes, coming back to awareness of the breath. Take any movement to reawaken the body. And then begin to make your way to fetal position on one side. And gently moving through this posture of rebirth, reawakening and emerging into the new. Begin to slowly, gently make your way to a seat. Let's take the hands, reach the hands up to the sky and press the palms together. And then begin to bend the elbows, bring the thumbs to the forehead and just gently brush the thumbs along the forehead. You have a calm mind. You see clearly. You keep your focus on the divine source, the truth. Bring your thumbs down to the lips. May you speak words of compassion, 
May the divine spirit speak through you and breathe through you. Bring the thumbs to the heart center. May you feel this inner spirit, the advocate, enlivening the body. Just take the hands and rub the hands, bringing some warmth, some friction between the hands. And maybe if it's comfortable for you to just cup the eyes with the hands for a moment and look into the the darkness, noticing the shapes, the colors, into this great beyond. May we be drawn into the spirit. May we be drawn into the transcendent. Bring your hands to heart center. We bow forward, honoring, giving thanks for the unconditional love and compassion of the divine spirit the Christ who brought, became human in order to make us divine. And we bow forward, honoring God in all things. Amen. Namaste. Well, thank you all for being here this evening. I hope that this was a good start to your Holy Week. Um, as I say, each, each Ignatian spirituality and yoga session or retreat is a bit of an experiment. I did this kind of version of this back some years ago and definitely more that I could, you know. So I look forward to your, hearing your thoughts, your feedback of what did you connect with. Um, but as we move through this week, I let you to really try to immerse yourself in this, this mystery, the Paschal mystery of dying and rising. Have a wonderful week. I hope the people there, that's the, everything works better. Thank you for joining in wherever you are and have a wonderful week. Thank you so much. Peace. Namaste. Namaste.